It's been quite a long time since the last tutorial, but today we are finally going to see how you can simply add accessories and personality to the character you have just created. We will first talk about how to improve your character creation, and at the end I will give you a few tips on how to light and render your scene. So most of the time a big part of the personality of a character comes from its facial expression. But when you are a beginner, it may be one of the hardest things to do. How to do it when sculpting feels like the worst thing to do, and when you don't even have a clue about anatomy. Since we are not professional and not trained enough to achieve this kind of level of sculpting, we can still give some character and charisma with the way your character is posing, its accessories, the background, and even some easy stuff like eyebrows, the shape of the eyes, where it's looking. When you are starting a project, one of the main tips I can give you is to do some sketches before you start it. Take notes on what kind of impression you want your character to give and look for references. These first steps will help you to know where you're going with your character and give you a story and a unique personality. For the character I've been doing in the two previous tutorials, I decided to add her some accessories. To match her look and vibe, I added a big chunky bag. And since she's a very simple model character, I didn't want it to make a simple real life sized bag. So I decided to make it way bigger than it should be. I won't go in details of how I made the bag because it's kind of basic modeling. Um, it's not really a step-by-step -step tutorial. I just want to give you an idea of what you can achieve with only the modeling tools because I know how sculpting can be impressive at first. And since I want the tutorial to be beginner friendly, I won't be talking about sculpting in this video, even though I tend to do more and more sculpting these past few months. So here is the final result. As you can see, texture is also a great tool to create an harmonious character. I used the same texture and almost the same color for the shoes and the bags, for example. These objects helped me to have a more finished look to create a whole unique character in a simple way with some simple tool. There is a ton of YouTube video on how to create your own material and texture and you can check the previous part of this tutorial to see what texture I use for this particular character. And there are even some online library where you can find freed and paid texture. Let's now talk about lightning and rendering. So first, lightning. I'm not professional when it comes to lightning scene, but here is a few tips that I can give you and what I've learned since I was starting 3D on Blender. If you don't want to bother too much, just add an environment texture. I really recommend to check out the Polygon Runway channel if you don't know how to set this up because they have a short video that explains it very well. If you don't want to use HDRI, you can also put your own light one by one. This may be a little bit longer, but at least you can control all the light by yourself. And you can of course combine the two by using an HDRI and adding light where you want to. So just think about the mood you want to give to your scene. Is it daylight, night, sunny, rainy, inside or outside? And don't forget to add additional light. I think it really adds dimension to your scene. It can be small lamp on a table, rays of light coming from the window. I think that those small details automatically will add so much to your scene and make it less kind of flat. If you are a beginner, you can use the three light technique, which is pretty simple. You just have to put one light to the left, one to the right, and one on the top. It's a pretty good way to light up your scene in a very simple way. Don't be shy and play with the color of the light. You can make a scene warmer or colder just by playing with the color of your light. I also really like to add blur background with the camera. I feel like it's give even more dimension to your scene. And it's pretty simple to set up. You just have to check the depth of field uh, in your camera setting. You can select an object you want the camera to focus on or you can also just set it manually with the f-stop. 
and I also didn't mention it before but as you can see I render almost every time in auto graphic view which means that everything is kind of brought back to the same level and the same distance compared to the basic perspective camera that will act the same as a normal camera. This setting is really up to your preferences and the look you want to achieve at the end. The things when it comes to render is that it will always depend on the power of your computer. First thing to do, if you don't already know, is to choose the GPU compute in the device tab if you can. I'm saying if you can because some computers that aren't very powerful don't have a GPU but only a CPU. In this case, simply use the CPU or just render in EV. What I personally like is to render in cycle and at 200% because it's simply going to make a larger render at the end, so it's going to double the size and we will have a nicer quality. But it's also going to take way more time to render. Here in the render tab, on the top left corner, you will have the setting of your render. Here is the frame number one. I have also the time it took uh, for Blender to render my scene and at the end we have the number of samples. So here, for example, for a scene with 512 samples at 200%, it took 45 seconds to my computer to render, so it's not that bad. If I like the quality, I could just stop here, but for the sake of this video, let's try a few things out. If I'm rendering at 100% instead of 200%, the render is only going to take 13 seconds, which is a pretty impressive difference. So now I know 200% for picture is great, but for animation, for example, it will make our render very, very long. The best thing to do is actually just to try different things out. When you open Blender, it will automatically put 4096 samples, but is there a difference between a render at 512? Well, here in my scene, not really. But this can change if you have like more light, motion blur, if it's a way bigger scene with a lot of details and not a lot of objects. Just test a few parameters and try to find the right balance between quality and time. And that's the end of this little video. I wanted to keep it simple so it could be beginner friendly, but if you want me to talk more about a particular subject, just let me know in the comment section. 